they did chromotherapy for all sorts of things, not just in the morning. They had different times of the day where they, they figured out if people were to get out in those light rays, they would get different healing. With light therapy, whether it's a laser, low level light pads, whatever you're using that's light therapy, the body only can take so much dose. We're in really a pandemic of depression, anxiety. There's more suicides right now than ever before. It's crazy. You know, when you're inside, there's something that they used to call it sad or seasonal affective disorder. People aren't getting the light. And the most important light for us as humans is the light of the sun in the morning and at night. In fact, they've done research where people have done what they call sun gazing, and they actually have reset the gut biome by looking at the sun. And so when, when we did our research, the light that's most important to the body is red and blue light. So it could be anywhere from 470 nanometer light all the way up to 810, 820 nanometer light, which is infrared, but our body loves that. Now there's a whole lot more spectrum than that, but that's the spectrum in which our healing light. So at night, of course, less of the lower frequencies, more of the higher frequencies, so your brain knows to go to sleep. Because as we cycle through, our body is turned on and turned off from the light from the sun. It tells our hormones what to do. When you think about chromoforms, every cell of your body has little batteries in the cell. Those are called chromoforms. They store energy. When you've absorbed enough energy, then your body starts reflecting what's left. That's why you can see me and I can see you is because we're, we've absorbed as much energy in the cells as we can from this source, and we're, we're basically reflecting that light. We're seeing the colors that we're not absorbing. The colors that our body absorbs are the colors that are, our body needs. So what we're showing here is that with light therapy, whether it's a laser, low-level light pads, whatever you're using that's light therapy, the body only can take so much dose. Dr. Sadral, who's our science officer, he's the, one of the first people ever published with photobiomodulation in the brain. We actually have evidence that shows when you give too much light therapy, it can actually have a negative effect. The cell receptors turn off and they stop absorbing light, just like, so there's a certain amount of time in a certain period. So like our light helmet, which I'm gonna show you over here, we have that program so that the people with dementia can't do anything. They can't adjust the light frequencies, they can't adjust anything, they just press play and it does it, just like the brain tap. We don't want people to have to mess with all that. We've already done all that for them so we know they're getting the right dose at the right time. We also have nasal lights. I don't know if you've ever seen those. It's a little LED light you put in your nose and it shines light into your brain. Now, what we learned in what I talked about earlier about the Vedas and how they did the therapy in India was they did chromotherapy for all sorts of things, not just in the morning. They had different times of the day where they, they figured out if people were to get out in those light rays, they would get different healing. As an example, at two o'clock every day, your temperature is gonna drop two degrees. Wherever you're at in the world, at two o'clock it's gonna drop because that tells our body it's time to recycle. We're in a cycle, it's not just women that have cycles, everybody has a cycle and the body is resetting. Now, if we were still in the Serengeti, we'd take a nap, just like the, the gazelle and the zebras. But if you're in America, we do coffee, tea, chocolates, you know, stay stimulated, stay alive, stay what, doing what we're doing. But really what we need is to, it's telling our bodies it's time to downregulate. It's time to relax, reboot, have another day. In 2003, when they measured the human genome or they mapped it, right? We all heard this wonderful thing happen. They really only mapped 1%. The reality is that they did that because they said 99% of you, what you do in genetics doesn't matter. It's all just junk DNA. That's why they didn't get the genetic promise. So when they, what they really found out was the junk DNA changes every 40 seconds. So it's not like you change every 40 seconds. You have trillions of gene expressions. So they're all changing all the time. And they do this by this biophotaic exchange. Now, as we age, what happens is we don't have ATP. We don't have energy at the cellular level. So we don't have the energy to change our genes. So the only way is backwards. That's the telomeres and things like that. So the more energy we give our body, that's why a lot of people do the anti-aging thing because light therapy is a really good way to keep the genes expressing and basically has a stem cell reaction as well. So what happens though, when we give light to that cell, they now know that it resets the Krebs cycle, resets the cell memory, and brings the cell back to life. So aging isn't exactly what we think it is. 
there's right now, today, we're going to have more centenarians alive than ever before. You know, people are moving toward, you know, uh, longer and longer age in living because of our life and, and what we're doing to basically feed ourselves. And there are nutrients and supplements you can take as well, but I believe like William Cousins, who's like one of the founders and pioneers of light therapy, he said the most underprescribed nutrient in the world today is light. We actually have the evidence that it works.